We're going to make an electroscope, which can also be used as a cosmic ray detector. Now, the electroscope is going to be inside a glass jar. Now, this could be from a pickle or a mayonnaise jar. Just make sure you have a lid. And we also need a pair of scissors, some aluminum foil, a pair of vice grips or a hacksaw, something to help you cut through a wire coat hanger here. Okay. Let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to make are the very thin, delicate leaves, the indicator part that's going to be inside of this jar. Now let me show you how to do that. Your first step is to take your piece of aluminum foil and fold it in half. You're then going to take your pair of scissors and cut a small strip from one of the ends. Okay. And we want to make sure this strip is the same size. So, go ahead and cut them both to the same size. And if I were to open it, now I have a much larger strip. Okay, but leave it closed just for a moment because you're also going to cut little corners off of either side. Okay. So, I have the open end down here and little corners I've cut off either side of the folded part. Don't cut all the way through or you won't have one long strip. You'll have two shorter pieces. Okay, And then you can go ahead and open it up. You want to make this as flat as you possibly can. and Try and take as many of the wrinkles out as you can. Okay, To cut open the wire coat hanger, you can use a pair of vice grips. Now, vice grips have a wire cutting part right on the very inside part of the jaw, right near the, the, the pinpoint here. So we're going to put the wire in as far as it can possibly go clamp down and wiggle the wire just back and forth a few times and the coat hanger is cut in two. Now for this particular uh, experiment I'm going to cut also right here, right after the bend. So my vice grips are going to cut right afterwards. I'm going to wiggle the wire back and forth until I have my piece. Now I'm going to use the rest of this coat hanger for another electricity project, I'm sure. Okay, So now you have a piece of thick wire that's roughly this shape. Using the vice grips, I'm going to straighten it out into the shape that I really want, which is going to be kind of like an L. Straighten this edge out, and I'm also going to turn this end up, just like so. So I have roughly this shape here. Now, most coat hangers have a very thin coating on them, and you want to make sure you get that off with the sandpaper. And this width here, this is where I'm actually going to put that little foil leaf I just cut out. So I want to make sure it's the right size before I go and put it in my electroscope. And I'm just going to hang it right on the end, and I see that it fits fine. Okay. Now your glass jar needs to be modified just a little bit. You need to drill a small hole or punch a small hole right in the middle of the jar so that the rod can fit right through that hole. Just like that. Go ahead and thread on your piece from the, the foil piece. Okay. And you're going to put the whole thing inside your jar. Okay, so you determine the height, how high this electroscope, the foils inside the electroscope um, are going to be raised up because you want the foil to be pretty much in the middle of the jar. When you've got that position, you're going to take a hot glue gun or some tape or something and just secure the top edge here. Your electroscope is nearly complete. There's one more step. To the end of this rod here, right on top, we're going to add a big ball of aluminum foil. So go ahead and grab yourself a big piece and wad it up. Okay, you kind of want a kind of a loose ball of aluminum foil, just like that. And you're going to insert it onto the end just by pushing it. So your electroscope is ready for testing. So what is it exactly? It's basically an instrument, a very 
simple instrument for detecting electrostatic charge. Now it could be positive or negative charge, it doesn't matter. Either one will actually make the electroscope work just fine. Here's what you do. You put on a pair of socks and scuff along the carpet and get really close to the edge of your ball and then you can actually touch it if you want. What you want to do is you want to watch the leaves inside. Now it's difficult to see right now but what's happening is the leaves are just barely apart, just like this, so just hanging freely when it's not charged, when it's grounded. When you charge up your electroscope by touching it, um, by zapping it in any number of different ways, you can do it while you slide on the, um, a plastic slide at the park, and then right at the end of the slide go ahead and touch it and see what happens. Any way of building up static electricity that you have, you can rub a balloon on your head and then see what happens. Basically, when this is charged, the leaves are going to be the same charge. They'll either be both plus or both minus, and they're going to fly as far apart as possible, as far apart as they can get, and they may even fly off if it's a big enough charge. And when you ground it, meaning when you make the positive and negative charges equal on the foil leaves, they're going to come back to their neutral position. Okay, so this is a great way to tell if you've got an electrostatic charge. If you're somebody that always gets shocked when they get in and out of the car, take this with you and see what happens. Go ahead and find as many things as you can around your house that can actually charge up your electroscope. To turn this into a cosmic ray detector, you need to charge it first. And when it's in its charge state, simply leave it like this. Now what you're going to see is that uh, after you charge your electroscope, it's going to fly out, but then it'll start to come back, but then it'll hover and stay in kind of like a midpoint position here. Your electroscope is now ready to indicate cosmic rays. Now basically what's going to happen is every so often, every four to five seconds, you're going to see a little dink, just like this. And the leaves may fly closer together or farther apart, but usually it's closer together. And so every waver, every movement like this of the little foil leaves inside indicates that your electroscope has just been hit by a cosmic ray. So what is a cosmic ray? Well, a cosmic ray is basically an energized particle. It's, it's not a ray at all. It's actually just a small particle, if you can think of it like a ping pong ball. And they zip around our atmosphere and they come into our atmosphere actually from either the sun or from the far reaches of the universe. And this can actually detect cosmic rays. Now, Cosmic rays can u are usually positive because they're usually protons. About 90% of them are protons. Only about 1% are electrons. The uh, remaining percentage, about 9%, are actually associated with the helium molecule, which um, they're actually uh, uh, alpha particles. But anyway, so most of them are going to be protons that are just zipping around, and this is just one way of identifying what is zinging around that is invisible. You can't see it, but you can definitely see its effects. And you'll see that by when the leaves... Um, f flutter just a little bit after being partially charged. Go ahead and give that a try. Have fun!